Boys, if you ever pray, pray for me now. I don't know whether you fellows ever had a load of hay fall on you, but when they told me yesterday what had happened, I felt like the moon. The stars and all the planets had fallen on me. I've got the most terrible, responsible job a man ever had. A county official and later U.S. Senator from Missouri, 33rd President of the United States, Harry S. Truman, was selected by the Democratic Party in 1944 to replace then Vice President Henry Wallace as Roosevelt's new running mate. Truman took the oath of office of the Vice President on January 20th, 1945, and 85 days later, he was taking the oath of President of the United States. Only weeks later, Germany surrendered, ending the war in Europe. On May 8, 1945, Truman's 61st birthday, the president had the honor of announcing VE Day, or Victory in Europe Day. While in Europe for the Potsdam Conference, attended by representatives from the United Kingdom and the Soviet Union in order to establish post-war order on the continent, Truman and the United States War Department were still contemplating actions in the Pacific, where Japan still refused to surrender. After hearing that the first atomic bomb was successfully tested on July 16, 1945, Truman hinted to Soviet leader Joseph Stalin that the U.S. was ready to use an entirely new kind of weapon to cease Japanese aggression. A short time ago, an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima and destroyed its usefulness to the enemy. That bomb has more power than 20,000 tons of TNT. The Japanese began the war from the air at Pearl Harbor. They have been repaid many-fold, and the end is not yet. We are now prepared to destroy more rapidly and completely every productive enterprise the Japanese have in any city. We shall destroy their docks, their factories, and their communications. Let there be no mistake, we shall completely destroy Japan's power to make war. In 1945, with the strikes on Hiroshima and Nagasaki on August 6th and 9th, respectively, the United States brought the Japanese military complex to a halt. Six days later, Japan surrendered. It was a move that arguably saved countless lives on both sides of the conflict. And Eleanor Roosevelt wrote of Truman's heavy decision, he made the only decision he could to avoid the tremendous sacrifice of American lives. As the American people transitioned from a nation at war to a nation at peace, Truman faced a myriad of challenges. Truman was able to win bipartisan support, however, in his support of the creation of the United Nations and the Truman Doctrine, which advocated Soviet containment. Many in Washington and all over America were of the mind that Russia was bent on world domination and that the Marshall Plan both gave financial aid to a post-war Europe while simultaneously acting to prevent the spread of communism. Truman's second term saw Truman come from behind in a stunning upset over Republican candidate Thomas Dewey. At one point during the election, the odds seemed so stacked against the president that Chicago Tribune editors famously published the erroneous headline, Dewey Defeats Truman. Truman's second term saw the first televised inauguration. And while the technological advances continued at home, so did they abroad. The Soviet Union detonated their own atomic bomb on August 29, 1949. The United States responded in 1953 when Truman announced the first detonation of the hydrogen bomb on January 7th. 
The policy of communist containment led the United States into the Korean War via the United Nations troops led by American General Douglas MacArthur. When it became clear that the Korean conflict could lead to a full-scale war with the Soviet Union, MacArthur's strategy to attack Chinese bases supplying Korea with red Chinese and Soviet weapons and warplanes clashed with Truman's wishes to avoid that kind of potentially catastrophic conflict. When Truman dismissed MacArthur, he sealed his political fate. His approval rate among the American people plummeted, Gallup polls reporting them at 22 percent. 